one day I woke up and I got a, a message from my mother and it was a clip telling me how to protect myself from COVID-19. And you know what was inside the video? It was things to do, eat garlic, stand in the sunshine, uh, take warm water. And it struck my mind that some people really are believing this and this could be the norm, you know, in people in villages, people, those who are not informed, who have not access to, you know, to reliable information, they could believe this and they could practice this and it could end up affecting many people and losing so many people. And I realized that so many companies and organizations were struck and stranded on what to do because their work was not related to health. No one had this kind of expertise and other organizations could close down, waiting maybe that this virus will go away and they will continue their project. Then I said, why not take an active role? First of all, to educate the populace collaborate with those who have some knowledge and find a way to share reliable information from reliable sources. For us, it gave us now an opportunity to reinvent ourselves and also, you know, reshape the direction, kind of find another direction we can take amidst of the, these global challenges that require so many people to come up, so many young leaders who can, you know, rise up in the midst of this challenge and find a way to contribute towards finding the solution to the current problem. This is the first time that as an organization we've experienced something like this as well. You have to be honest with yourself as a leader and say you are just as clueless right now as everybody else as to when will this whole thing kind of sizzle down, will we get a second, third wave. One of the things that's working out for us right now is because we don't know how long we'll have to work remotely for and we can't afford to pay rent. And where our office is stationed is at a place called Mobile Medical Services and in Zambia it's a law that every hospital or clinic has a youth-friendly corner so we kind of went in and negotiated that we will run the youth-friendly corner so that's where we moved our hub from Kaunda Square to Leopard Hill Road and where the hub is that's where our office space is now also and with everything that's happening we had to go in and say we cannot afford to continue paying rent and people are not coming in. The youth hub isn't being utilized. Donors have pulled out our social enterprises and making money. And so we had to renegotiate our terms with them and say, okay, can you not collect rent from us? And in turn, we'll do this other kind of work for you. Now, as young leaders, whether we are at the running the organizations or we are at grassroots level or higher level, this is the time to now plan like crazy. I think we've all established that there were so many gaps and weaknesses in our contingency plans and some of us didn't have any at all. So now is the time to, as we hope for the best, prepare for the worst as community leaders, as national leaders, as young leaders, as leaders in general. This is the time for us to now look at the gaps in our contingency plans, identify where we went wrong, identify what gaps were there, what challenges are we facing now, how can we re-strategize, look at what has been working for your organization so far, and really learn from those lessons and then implement. I think it has also made me realize that when a group of committed people are working towards one common goal, irrespective of what challenges that are bound, people will be willing to, beyond anything, uh, go up far and above uh, their normal call of duty and i think it's up to us as leaders of organizations to be able to offer that hope uh, it could be through consistent communication it could be through words of encouragement uh, and it could be through realizing that we're the instruments that should help carry through this bandwagon of people that are going through a lot of economic social spiritual and emo emotional strife so to a larger degree um, I would ascribe um, resilience, sense of purpose and hope to be the three leadership traits which um, I see manifesting during these challenging times.